Friday. It's Kevin. It's live from lockdown. Welcome to all of you. I see some people already tuning in. Thanks for joining me. Whoa. Tuning trouble already. It won't be so bad this week, I promise. So, live from lockdown number 32. This is the 32nd time I've done this. My almost weekly live stream coming to you from my somewhat nomadic lockdown studio. Uh, and to acknowledge where I sit. I'm now on the traditional territory of the Wendat and Anishinaabek nations, the people of the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, the Mississaugas of the New Credit, and the Métis Nation are all the First Nations that have kept this land safe and sacred and whole since time immemorial. And it is their enduring hospitality and generosity that makes it possible for the likes of me to be here. And uh, for that, I am eternally grateful. And for that, I dedicate an hour or so of words and music, first and foremost, uh, to the spirit of justice and reconciliation with the First Peoples of this land. Thanks for joining me in that, too. And speaking of hospitality, as I do every week now, I want to sp say special thanks to the hosts, the current hosts of my nomadic lockdown studio, uh, Robin Easton and, Re and Rebecca Campbell and Rat Space Rehearsal and Recording Studios, where I'm sitting. Uh, Robin and Rebecca have been really fabulous welcoming me here and making space for me to come in and practice every day and to do my shows and a bit of teaching. This is a really fantastic place. Uh, the website and Robin's phone number are on the notes on the side of the page. If you're in the Toronto area and looking to book a rehearsal, looking to shoot a video, want to do somewhere that's COVID safe and respectful and really well equipped, this is the place. And as you know, business is tough uh, in this kind of world, so um, consider that if you're doing that kind of work. Thank you very much. Off the top, that was a tune called Funny How Time Slips Away by the great Willie Nelson. Uh, Sam Broverman requested that. Sam's one of my very regular listeners and supporters and a fabulous man that I've mentioned often. Um, yeah, uh, with, uh, with lots of great, I, I say Sam has big ears, which is not uh, a physical comment nor an insult, but he, um, while I've often referred to him as a crooner, uh, he listens to a lot of music and has suggested a lot of really great music, including some things from the more of the country realm like that one. So. Um, Happy to do that. He's got another Willie Nelson request in the queue that I will try to work up sometime soon. But thanks, Sam. I uh, really appreciate that. Um, I've got, got lots of requests today. I had a good week for, um, for catching up on some of the requests you've been sending. Thank you for doing that. Please keep them coming. If I don't play them right away, it doesn't mean I don't notice. It's just that I have a long list and um, a limited amount of tune learning time every week. But I am trying to keep those rolling. And... Um, this next one's a request as well from another really great friend and longtime supporter and sometimes student of mine, Pat Kelly in Ottawa. Uh, Pat and I had a great online session last week. He, was, he had a new loop pedal he wanted to figure out. And as you know, I, I step on loop pedals often in this show. Uh, yeah, Pat's been a great support. Sent me a couple of really cool uh, requests. And again, Pat, I apologize. Some of the more interesting ones on your list um, are still on my list. But uh, I kind of ran out of learning new tune time this week. So this is one that I've done before that you did request and that I already knew more or less. We'll see how I do. This is a Gershwin tune called Our Love Is Here To Stay. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Club is here to stay. Pat Kelly, thank you very much for that suggestion and your ongoing support. Have a look and see if anyone's, uh, no one's sending me texts. Lots of people, hello. Sam and Louise and Lorraine and Dave, Judy, Linda, Ola. Hey, everyone's here. Look at that, the whole gang. I love that. Thank you very much. Uh, nice to be back on Friday. One of my regular messages, you know, if you got an income and you're able to support some live music, people like me sure appreciate that. And again, I'll say this, I've got a lot of really generous, really fabulous supporters like some of those people I just mentioned who are uh, so kind and I really, really, really appreciate your support. Um, and if you've been supporting me for a while and you want to support someone else this week, that's great. This, I'm by no means the only one trying to survive playing live music on the internet because we sure can't play live music out there in the nasty world where we need to keep our masks on. I do that to try to set a good example off the top of the show. I am alone in the studio, so okay at the moment, but try to be careful. So again, links on the side of the page. If you look at the notes, there's a link to my PayPal account and my Ko-Fi account. If you're in Canada, you can send me an e-transfer. Uh, thanks very much for considering that. Really, really appreciate it. So distracting. I got my show on, the, on my right here about 20 seconds behind. So um, hope that doesn't mess you up. Been looking at that. Um, more requests. So I've mentioned this, and again, the link is on the side of the page. One of my very favorite live streams is done by uh, a guy who I think comes from Missouri originally, but lives in Edinburgh, the fabulous city of Edinburgh. Sam Sonite, he goes by. Uh, Sam is a beautiful, beautiful musician. Oh, he's got this rich, rich voice, and he knows a million tunes. He does a show pretty much every Wednesday. Uh, this kind of time, this late afternoon if you're in North America and uh, evening if you're in the UK, I really encourage you to check Sam, Sam's show out. There's just no end of really, really great tunes. Sam's parents have become listeners to my show, Wilda and Steve Moses. Uh, I believe they're in Missouri, like I say, and they've been, um, they've been really uh, fun checking in and watching the show. And Steve sent me a great message last week. I'm going to read it to you. He said, in 1959, 1960, I was living in a residence hotel on New York City's Upper West Side, and so was Sam Most, who went on to become a renowned jazz flautist. That's an understatement. Sam Most, um, Sam Most is in some circles known as the father of bebop flute. I found a great quote from Leonard Feather recently, saying something like, um, if there's any justice, then uh, you know, Sam will be remembered as the person who, the foremost practitioner of jazz of, and bebop flute. Uh, really uh, important, important musician in the American jazz world. Here's back to Steve's uh, message. He was just starting out on his career and doubled on saxes, alto and tenor. I stayed up until the wee hours listening to him practice, helping him pick reeds, and generally in awe of, at his talent. One night, I helped him find the correct melody for Laura, a haunting tune from the soundtrack of a film noir from the 40s. He then played some wonderful improvisations. I would love to hear what you can do with it. It remains one of my favorite tunes. Thanks, Steve. Well, thanks, Steve. I don't uh, purport to come anywhere close to the work that uh, someone like... Uh, Sam Most could do on that. Um, There's a fabulous recording of Frank Sinatra singing this tune. Also a great recording of uh, Nat King Cole, one of my favorites, um, singing this one. So that was great inspiration to pull out Laura and have a look at that. So here is, um, for the first of a couple of ballads today, uh, David Raskin's Laura.
Laura, there you go. Hope you remember that tune. Steve, I hope that was okay. I have to say, I should have said this first. It's a little intimidating to play a tune after someone describes staying up all night with Sam Most finding the correct melody, because that's a fairly challenging melody, and I hope I got a couple of the notes uh, correct in there. There you go. Thanks for that. Thanks again for that idea. Thanks again to all of you keeping the requests coming, as I say every week. Uh, it doesn't look like this lockdown is going to end anytime soon, so it doesn't look like live from lockdown is going to end anytime soon. And uh, I really appreciate the inspiration to check out some new repertoire. I've learned a lot of tunes. At least I've uh, played a lot of tunes. Hope I've learned a few of them. So if you're a regular live from lockdown listener, you'll know that one of the um, things I try to do most weeks is to wish happy birthday to people. Two happy birthdays to uh, acknowledge this week. First of all, Rakesh Tiwari. Rakesh is a fantastic drummer, happens to play drums in the Special Interest Group, and I just realized that I didn't grab any CDs to flash at you on the show, but you know about my, my CDs and my Bandcamp page. And Rakesh plays drums in the Special Interest Group, as well as lots of really great musical projects. He's a very talented guy. He had a birthday on Wednesday, and I want to wish Rakesh a very happy birthday. Uh, and also a very good friend, Sylvie Dugas, who lives in Ottawa, who's a, a lovely woman and an old friend I first met at uh, Jazzworks Jazz Camp. Sylvie plays the piano, amongst many other things she does very well, and it was her birthday yesterday, and uh, really happy birthday, Sylvie. I may be um, saying too much, but uh, Sylvie lost her twin sister to cancer this year. And I imagine that losing your twin sister makes a birthday a somewhat bittersweet affair. So my, uh, my heart goes out to you today, Sylvie, and I hope you had a great birthday and are having a great week. I didn't ask Sylvie nor Rakesh if they had particular birthday requests, so I'm going to stretch this one. <laughs> mandolin time, as you can see. I haven't checked, but hopefully, uh, hopefully Dave has said mandolin yippers. <laughs> um... If you're a Canadian and you got a birthday in November, then one of the things that you do every year around your birthday, if you're a car owner, is put your winter tires on your car. Uh, because that's what we do in this part of the world at this time of the year, if you're going to be driving on the roads. And that seemed apropos to, um, to try to learn a new tune I didn't know on the mandolin. That I believe, I thought this was an old traditional tune, but uh, I, I believe it was written by a Canadian fiddler by the name of Graham Townsend. Uh, although, who knows, these tunes have multiple origins, and Catherine Nichol, if you're listening, you'll tell me whether you recognize this from some other place. Uh, but this is a fabulous tune that, as usual, I got from my good friend Stuart Seidel on the West Coast in his reams and reams of mandolin tunes that he sends me. Uh, it says called Ice on the Road. Put your winter tires on, folks. Ice on the Road. Uh, it's a tricky one. We'll see how it goes. <laughs>
Ice on the road, a little slippery. <laughs> there you go. Louise Bevan, if you got your mandolin, I forgot to warn you, but of course you knew that. E minor and G major. E natural minor with the flat seven chord, Stuart and Deborah, as we've discussed a few times. There you go. Thanks again for your patience with me trying to work out uh, my way around this crazy little instrument. I'm having a fun time. Somebody recently said to me that they thought my mandolin playing had improved since I started, which it should do because I do it every week, but sometimes hard to notice it. Let's hope so. Those strings are awful close together. It's hard to figure out sometimes where to put my fingers, how to remember where the notes are. Uh, a reminder, I mentioned the Special Interest Group and Bandcamp, of course. Again, on the side of the page, you can check the links to my Bandcamp pages and places to buy recordings. Not just mine, lots of really great music. And I'll say it again, if you're going to buy uh, recorded music from your, call, from your friends, your musical friends, try to do it at Bandcamp because they support, they like music. They care about music and musicians. Not necessarily sure that Spotify cares about musicians. So, um, oh, that's the wrong guitar for the next tune. Uh, so, please check that out. And if you're making your own record and you need some guitar tracks, uh, hit me up. I'm set up to record here. In fact, I did some recording this week for a, an old friend, Brandon Walker, that I found again recently. Brandon was working on some recording and needed a bit of guitar. And I, it's amazing what you can do these days. He can record uh, over there in Oakville and then uh, send me some tracks and I can add some guitar parts and send it back to him. It seemed to work. It's a fun thing to do. And again, one of those things that we can do in our own spaces uh, with and, and stay safe in these times. <clears throat> so another request. Again, I mentioned lots and lots of requests. Uh, this one comes from yet another of my fabulous friends uh, and supporters, Linda Partington. Linda, I think I saw you there. Uh, yes, there you are. Uh, Linda, thanks for joining me. Thanks for your generous support and your great words and comments. Um, Linda sent me a great message this week. Um, I've mentioned Linda before. She's a singer-songwriter, uh, mostly in the country blues tradition. We did some gigs and some recording many years ago. Man, oh man, it could have been the 1980s. <laughs> Maybe the early 90s. I think that was the late 80s when we started playing. And then we lost touch, and I hadn't seen Linda in years. And then the magic of Facebook. She found me on here. She's become a regular listener. Um, we had a really fun exchange this week about the weird nature of these gigs and playing for a, an absent audience was her term. Um, uh, she said, I enjoy the regulars that tune in. I feel a sense of camaraderie with this far-flung group of music appreciating people. It's part of the experience of being at a live show. What a great term, eh? This far-flung group of music appreciating people. It seems to me that Linda and Dave and Ola in England have become good friends even though they live on different continents. I, it is, um, you know, you've got to look for silver linings. And one of the silver linings of this crazy difficult time we're in is the ways that we can connect in whole new ways. And uh, I'm loving that. So Linda requested this next tune, and I promised I'd try to work it up. It's a tune by the late, great Charles Mingus. I actually opened last week with the blues, Nostalgia in Times Square, by Charles Mingus. This is another Charles Mingus blues um, that has been recorded by lots of people, uh, including Mingus, of course, and the great British guitarist John McLaughlin. There's a great recording by Joni Mitchell on the album that she did with Charles Mingus. Um, I first encountered this tune when I was about 15 years old and I picked up an album by Jeff Beck, an album that kind of changed my life, an album called Wired. Uh, and to this aspiring young rock guitar player, the sounds on that record blew my mind. My, my teacher at the time, a great Toronto guitarist named Mark Crawford, uh, taught me a few of those tunes. And um, yeah, that was the beginning of a whole other world of musical exploration that I'm still on. So I'm particularly thankful to Jeff Beck and that record. And I remember looking at that record and coming across this really strange tune called Goodbye Pork Pie Hat. I was quite enamored of the name. I didn't know anything about Charles Mingus. I didn't even know who Lester Young was. Uh, of course, this tune is, a, is an elegy for the great saxophone player uh, Lester Young. Um, so I didn't know who any of those people were. I just knew I liked Beck and I loved the name of this tune. So uh, with a little bit of a nod to Jeff Beck and a huge ton of thanks to Linda Partington and of course uh, great respect to Charles Mingus in particular. Here's my take on Goodbye Pork Pie Hat. Mm -hmm. 
I should sway. I went back and checked out a couple of recordings of this tune. And one of the interesting things, it's a very challenging bit of harmony. It's a blues, but it's really a twisted blues in terms of the harmony. Most of the people who record it, including John McLaughlin and Jeff Beck, don't actually solo over the recording changes, recorded changes. Even Mingus, actually, Mingus's recordings uh, kind of simplify the blues. Um, partially for reasons of technology and partially because I love a challenge. I'm going to try to play over the chord changes. Uh, so, again, wish me luck, eh? <laughs> Goodbye, pork pie hat. Thanks, Linda. <laughs>
Goodbye, pork pie hat. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Charles Mingus. Thank you, Jeff Beck. All those influences. You know, I ran through this uh, this afternoon before the show, and I said to myself, I'm going to figure out how I'm going to get out of that. And then I forgot to figure out how to get out of that. That's a tricky tune to get into and to get out of. So thanks. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. Goodbye, pork pie hat. <clears throat> a couple more tunes before we go. I'm going to do my message of love a little early today. First of all, make sure you got one of these all the time. Please put it on when you go outside. Please put it on when you go inside in a public place. Uh, even if the law doesn't say you should where you currently are, the laws are slowly catching up, but can't keep up with the virus, it seems. <laughs> you, may you may remember last week, if you were watching last week, I complained about the fact that my tuning, my strings needed changing. And I changed my strings on this guitar. Ah, you should have heard them on Tuesday. They were in prime shape. <laughs> now the G string's starting to slip again. Still much better than last week. So I noted that there were a couple of birthdays this week. Uh, another important anniversary, not a birthday. But yesterday was the 105th anniversary of the execution of Joe Hill. And that's my theme for my words today. Uh, Joe Hill, in case you don't know, was a Swedish-born labor activist who emigrated to the United States and worked as an itinerant labor, a laborer across the U.S. in the very early 1900s. Um, he was a really effective organizer. Uh, one of the things he did that I love is he used music uh, as a way to get his message out and to organize people. And he did a really great thing that a, a number of people have done since, um, which is to take uh, popular religious tunes because the religious organizations were also competing for the souls of the workers and he'd rewrite the words um, uh, quite effective and he, he wrote a lot of songs that have become anthems in the labor movement including the preacher and the slave there is power in a union uh, a bunch of tunes that uh, still get sung today now when you're a good labor organizer uh, you and when you encourage workers and enable workers to recognize and to stand up for their rights, you do not endear yourself to the bosses and the bosses' allies in the owner class. And as a result of that, uh, Joe Hill was framed and convicted for a murder that he clearly didn't commit and was executed on November the 19th, 1915. Uh, he's reputed to have said just before he died to a friend, uh, don't mourn my death, don't mourn, organize. Right to the end, Joe Hill. Uh, I was having a conversation yesterday about Joe Hill with my uh, favorite Scottish singer, uh, Susanna MacDonald, and I mentioned uh, that uh, on the subject of uh, acting on principles, uh, there's two great quotations that I don't know if they actually, actually come from Joe Hill originally, but they're attributed to him, uh, that I try to keep kind of in tandem when I think about things like um, acting principally uh, in the world and, and uh, taking principled stands on political issues. If you don't stand for something, you'll fall for everything. And sometimes you got to bend so you don't break. I'll leave those two with you to concentrate on. Uh, but like I say, Joe wrote a tune called There is Power in a Union, now, uh, which was based on an old religious tune uh, called There is Power in the Blood. Uh, you may know another tune called There's Power in a Union, uh, which was made famous by Billy Bragg. I think that Billy Bragg wrote this uh, lyric to the tune of another religious hymn, um, carrying on that great tradition, something that Billy Bragg has done really well. I'm a huge fan of him. I think that my good friend Dave Lipsy is a Billy Bragg fan too. So we, we celebrated Dave's birthday last week. But Dave, I hope you're still celebrating. And if you are indeed a Billy Bragg fan, we will um, we'll send this one out to you as well. The special interest group does there is power in a union, and here's uh, here's my attempt to do that one. Fact 
power in the land Power in the hands of a worker But it all amounts to nothing if together we don't stand There is power in a union Now the lessons of the past Were all learned with workers' blood The practice of the bosses we must pay for from the cities and the farmlands to the trenches full of mud War has always been the boss's way, sir The union forever defending our rights Down with the scabbies, our workers unite With our sisters and our brothers, together we will stand There is power in a union Now I long for the morning that they realize brutality and unjust laws will not defeat us. But who will defend the workers who cannot organize when the bosses send their lackeys out to cheat us? Money speaks for money, the devil for his own. Who comes to speak for the skin and the bone? What a comfort to the widow, a light to the child. There is power in a union With our brothers and our sisters from many far off lands There is power in a union With our sisters and our brothers Together we will stand There is power in a union There you go. Thank you, Billy Bragg. Thank you, Joe Hill. Thank you to uh, people organizing workers everywhere. It's something we got to keep doing because it's better if we stick together. Oh. And it's better if we stay in tune. <laughs> special shout out, speaking of unions, I'm going to say a special shout out to my union, which is. Um, Local 149 of the Canadian Federation of Musicians, part of the American Federation of Musicians of the United States and Canada, um, also known as the Toronto Musicians Association. Uh, the Toronto Musicians Association is a great organization with a fabulous uh, brand new board of directors just elected and an executive director named Michael Murray who's been a great advocate in this time. Done lots of work to get information out about uh, programs that are available for out-of-work musicians like me, and I want to say a special shout-out to them. If you watch this show regularly, you know that in um, Mar... No, when was it? In August, I did a special live stream sponsored by the Music Performance Trust Fund, uh, which is a, a great fund of, of money that the union controls uh, gathered from recordings, sales of recordings that supports live music, including live streams. And I'm very grateful to them because they're one of the organizations that helped, has helped keep us going in these very difficult times. I'm going to do one more tune, um, an extended loop like I often do at the end of my show and another request. This is um, a beautiful and very romantic ballad by the great Roberta Flack. Uh, requested by another one of my regular listeners who I saw saying hello earlier, uh, Judy Shand. Judy, thank you. Judy sent a bunch of requests um, in and keeps them coming, and uh, I sure appreciate that. Uh, uh, she sent me this one a few weeks ago. You may remember, again, if you watch regularly, I read a quote from uh, Al Waxman that's on a statue of Al uh, in Kensington Market in Toronto. Al was the king of Kensington, a famous... Canadian TV show for many years, and um, 
uh, I read that quote, and Judy sent me a message the next week, and she asked for this tune by Roberta Flack called The First Time Ever I Saw Your Face. And she said, because in the midst of the nonsense, sometimes romance makes a way into consciousness, and guys like Waxman send their wisdom from the park to lovers and those who want to be. I need that poetry. Thank you, Judy. Feels like this hour has gone fast. I may be wrapping up a little earlier than usual. I usually go over the hour, but this one will take me a while. Thank you again to all of you for listening. If you want to play along, this one's in C major. Lots of white notes. The first time ever I saw your face.
Thank you very much to all of you, as always, for listening. New World, I'm so happy to have you. I miss you. I love you. I'll see you soon.